Hello, I'm Karina Vandenover, partner at Elixir. Uh, as cities open up and companies begin their return to work, we at Elixir are looking to share with our audiences how companies have been affected by the pandemic and more importantly, how they're preparing to build back better their businesses post COVID-19. As part of our video series, Build Back Better post COVID-19, I have with me today, Sandrine DeVoe, Executive Vice President, Store of the Future at Farfetch, the luxury marketplace and platform. Hi, Sandrine. Thank you Hi. for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good to see you again. Um, so maybe let's just start with the first question, which is just tell us a little bit about yourself, your role at Farfetch and what are you responsible for? Yeah, sure. So uh, I've been at Farfetch for about five years now, uh, and my background is really in the tech and um, and fashion, luxury fashion. So always working kind of in technology and technology can change the way consumers shop and actually how retail is evolving. Uh, and within Farfetch, um, Farfetch I've uh, joined uh, to lead this a new business unit we created at the time called Store of the Future, which is really a retail innovation hub. So it's really looking around, around an horizon of kind of one to two years about what are the new type of technology which would change um, consumer behavior, but also would create new type of retail experience in, in the stores. And now we basically melt online and offline as one single experience. Wow, so lots of experience there in the space, particularly of digital, yeah. right? During the lockdown, uh, online retailers have really taken off at the expense of those that are still quite heavily reliant on physical footfall. Do you think that these companies need to now reconsider their digital offering? Well, I think this is not even uh, something to think about. This is a necessity, right? I mean, I think what there has been very uh, obvious during that pandemic is if you didn't have a strong digital presence, you just didn't have a business. And and what is interesting is to see the shift of customer behavior or new customer never bought online, we suddenly are buying online. Yeah. And, and I think they will carry on doing that because they found uh, convenience and they found a way to actually engage with a given brand so that type of behaviors needs to be accepted by brands, but also I think having a, a digital mindset at the middle of their strategy is is, is a must have. We are going to see an acceleration of online. I think we are, I think we are seeing about like 30% of uh, luxury sales will be online in 2025. And also new technology will accelerate that for sure. Uh, so I just think companies have to really just put that at the forefront of their strategy if they haven't yet. Um, so you talked a, a bit about kind of the customer experience of the future and or rather today that's shaping that future. Can you just share some kind of concrete examples of how uh, some of the work that you're doing at sort of the future you think can actually be an inspiration for some of these retailers and how they're dealing with the customer experience? Yeah, so I think it's interesting because from the beginning, when we created Store of the Future, it was always based on the basis that we need to give the customer the choice at any type of the journey to decide how they want to interact with the sales associate and how they want to use the technology. Um, but that connection between a sales associate and the customers was at the center of a philosophy, really, uh, is how I can have a fully personalized experience uh, and be connected with a human, but also be completely disconnected if I wanted to. So we have a base, a platform, a retail platform within the, the Farfetch ecosystem on, on that connected retail, on, um, on apps that are given to sell associate on the app, which is becoming for the, for the consumer, uh, a, a store enable app and that then create a very uh, amazing kind of uh, close dialogue between between the two people uh, and it doesn't need to be installed that's what is amazing is like you can literally uh, converse with a cell associate in your living room uh, they can provide you with a wish list you can pay by link at home you can also think about okay what are the new collection coming and you don't need to be in a physical space but you also can be in a physical space so when we developed this initial technology it was really around uh, addressing the physical uh, customer touch point and customer problem and what we realized because of the connected experience we created through, through our platform within those two apps or those technologies that can be used anywhere. It doesn't need to be in a physical space. Do you, I know that is a technology of today then, it, do you see a reverting back to the old ways or is this now right, the new normal? 
as we go back to the norm, right? Uh, I mean, the, the power of digital will be still there. The power of actually be able to to have a personalized experience, to to shop online. But when you go in stores, this is where you know the concept of a, of a store becoming less and less transactional, but more and more experiential is yeah. going to move to right. So, so I think this is a big trend we are seeing. Um, I think there will be actually um, a sense of nervousness to go back to those big stores, yeah. department stores, I think needs to really reinvent this sense in terms of experiential retail. Uh, we, you know, the anti-crowd mentality and the feeling to feel safer in smaller group as well mm -hmm. uh, and, and more engaged and more kind of connected, I think will be the next norm of, 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 of stores. And that's why I think, you know, small curated stores might be more powerful uh, in the medium term than actually huge department stores. And and do you think that means less physical stores for some of these big brands? Well, less or probably different. I think probably just they have to rethink the store space. Yeah. So instead of having uh, stores where they have tons of rack of clothes, I really think there will be that concept of more of thinking about uh, the physical layout, uh, more event-based, more experiential-led. Yeah. So back to the technology angle, something we've been looking at is, is the concept of experiential retail uh, powered by augmented reality, right? Yeah. Um, we know in the past it doesn't really get much traction with um, with luxury uh, because it was seen as gimmicky and the use case wasn't actually really evident. But now how we are thinking around a uh, new type of bringing like digital clothes or digital um, digital yeah. sampling, right? Because we might not have shows anymore. Like, you know, yeah. we are already seeing brands stopping their shows. So to yeah. which extent um, stores can become an uh, ongoing showroom, an ongoing runway uh, using digital um, augmented retail tech to do that in a very meaningful way with a real purpose. Uh, I think this is more what stores have to, brands have to think of, is more that theater that need to be accelerated. So then the transaction happens through your app or happen through, yeah, it will happen through your app, not necessarily with the physical space. Yeah. So it's no, reverting the model, I think. Yeah, this is very interesting because in the last couple of years, right, the the push to online, uh, there was just an article yesterday that I shared about the new battleground for for LVMH and caring mm -hmm. is is uh, is in the online battlefield. And what I'm hearing from you is that it's actually it's it's obviously not just online, but it's also the whole physical and the use of digital in the physical environment. Yeah. And, and the importance of actually focusing, refocusing on the usage of that physical space. So let's let's shift a little bit to sort of some of your experiences in terms of the internal ways of working, right? As, yeah. um, do you foresee any changes in the ways of working with your teams at Farfetch in the way you internally work together going forward? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there is a lot of great benefit of working for home. I think a lot of us realize that just to be more effective and just really saving times on commute and less on yeah. travel all around the world. We had a culture of traveling a lot because we are so global, we have office all around the world. I think we proved that we can be as effective communicating with someone in China, in Japan, and in Brazil through, you know, uh, video conferences. So I think we probably will rethink about how we travel and how our travel uh, policy and, and needs are moving forward. I do think, funny enough, is you can be very close to your team because you've developed that great relationship. But at some point, as a human being, you still the emulation of a group. So yeah. that's what technology can't can't do, which is what I was telling before around also that the same concept of the stores, right? Great to have tech in stores as long as actually you have someone to help you for this. So, yeah. so this is the same thing, right? You can get great motivation, but at some point, as human being, you need the emulation from all of your colleagues to carry on. And and I think uh, we will still need to have that forum. It might be that we have um, we have less people in the office, as I said, because more people are working from home and we have more desktop policy, I don't know. But this is definitely, we need still to have a physical space to, we want, I mean, yeah. No, that's good. Thank you. No, I think that's all we've got time for. Right. Uh, that was super insightful. Thank you, Sandrine. I know I promised Thank we you. would do it super quick. Um, I really appreciate your time and sharing your perspectives um, and experiences with us and really great to hear some of the things that you are looking at, thinking about and planning for at Farfetch and looking forward to hearing about the next new thing from Farfetch <laughs> in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karina. Yeah.